Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the GPD Win Max. Now I'm super excited about this and I do want to mention that this is probably going to turn into two or three videos, but I wanted to get the first one out of the way. Now if you're not familiar with the GPD Win Max, this is the successor to the older GPD Win. Here's the first generation model and the GPD Win 2. And I gotta say, the Win Max is definitely a big upgrade from these older models in every single aspect except for the form factor. The Win Max does come in a lot bigger than the older ones, but it's still very portable, it's still a handheld, and in my opinion, I love the way they've set this new one up. So in this video, we're gonna do a quick unboxing, check out the form factor, go over the specs, and then we'll get right into some benchmarks and gaming performance with the GPD Win Max. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the Max, and we also have a few accessories here. I believe this is just the charger. So we have a 65 watt USB Type-C fast charger, and over on this side, I believe we just have our USB Type-C to USB Type-C charging cable. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way and get the Max out of the box. So yeah, this is a very sleek unit here. I love the way they've set this up. We have an 8 inch IPS screen. This does have Thunderbolt 3 built in, so you could connect this to an eGPU, and I will be doing a video on that later on, so stay tuned to the channel. We get a compact backlit keyboard, and we still have those controls built in with dual analog sticks, D-pad, A, B, X, Y, and four triggers around rear, so this is a true gaming handheld. And I don't think there's anything else in here except for a user manual. I was really hoping they would at least include a screen protector with this, but uh, I don't think it's in here. Nope just the user manual itself. So like I mentioned, the Win Max is a lot bigger than the original GPD Win or the GPD Win 2, and this is kind of bordering on the line of not being handheld anymore, but it's right there, and I love that they've set it up this way. That 8-inch IPS screen looks absolutely amazing, and it's still very, very portable. One of the biggest upgrades on the Max versus the older ones is actually the keyboard. We have a fully backlit keyboard, and it's definitely not full size. There's still a lot of function keys going on here, but I think they've done an amazing job with the space they have here. And the keyboard feels great. It's miles ahead of the older GPD Win units. Over on the right hand side, we have a micro SD card slot, full size gigabit Ethernet, and on the very front, we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This will do audio in and audio out. Taking a look at the back, full size HDMI two USB 3.1 ports, one USB Type-C port, and one Thunderbolt port. I'm really excited about this because I could take this on the go and when I get home, I could plug this right into an eGPU setup and get better gaming performance and basically dock this as a gaming desktop. And finally, on the right hand side, we do have our controller switch. When this is in keyboard mode, our analog sticks will kind of work as a mouse pointer. You can use them as your mouse if you like to, or you could use the built-in trackpad. But when it's time to game and you need a controller, Swap this to the controller mode, and it sets everything up in X input mode, and the built-in controller will work just like an Xbox One controller would with PC. Now it's time to move over to the specs. For the CPU, we have an Intel i5-1035G7. Four cores, eight threads, base clock of 1.2 GHz, with a boost up to 3.7. The GPU is the built-in Intel Iris Plus 940 graphics with 64 EUs, 16 GB of LPDDR4 RAM running at 3200 MHz, a beautiful 8-inch IPS touch panel at 1280 by 800. The storage on this is fully upgradable with an NVMe SSD, but this one happened to have a 512 gigabyte SSD in it. We also have that micro SD card slot, 57 watt hour battery, 802.11ax dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, full size Ethernet, and I've already walked you through the I.O. that's included on the GPD Win Max. Now this out of the box is running Windows 10 Home, but you could install Linux on it or any other x86 based operating system if you really wanted to. As for pricing, it is a bit up there. I actually backed this on Indiegogo and I was able to pick it up for 779 USD. Suggested retail price on this is 885. But if you take a look on sites like eBay and Amazon, you're going to see this listed for $1,000 to $1,300, and that is way overpriced. And even at the $885 price mark, with the performance we're getting out of this, it's still really high when you compare it to a gaming laptop that you can pick up for around the same exact price. You're going to get much better performance out of something with a dedicated NVIDIA or AMD GPU built in, but it's not going to come close to the form factor, and that's really what we're paying for here. Believe it or not, the Win Max is actually comfortable to use in the controller layout here. Now, if you're trying to type while you're holding it up, it's going to be a bit different, but they've laid these out pretty nicely up top. The right analog stick will control the mouse. You can use left click and right click from the shoulder buttons up top. 
And this is actually the main way I've been using the mouse on this unit, but we also have the touchpad and the touchscreen, so we have tons of options here. It's actually pretty comfortable to use like this. Now, if you have smaller hands, it might be a little harder to reach inside for that right analog stick, but overall, I think they've laid this out quite nicely. So first thing I wanted to do was run a couple benchmarks. First up, we have Crystal Mark. This is testing the SSD speed, and like I mentioned, it's an NVMe here. It's not the fastest that I've seen, but it can be upgraded with a high-quality NVMe if you really wanted to do it down the road. But these speeds are more than sufficient for a handheld like this, and it's not sluggish whatsoever. Next up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1093, multi, 4225. And if we compare this to the GPD Win 2 with the 7Y30 CPU, single core on that was 605, multi, 1488. And keep in mind, this is Geekbench 5, so the scores do look lower when you're comparing this to Geekbench 4. And finally, on the CPU side of things, we have Cinebench R20, and the best I could get out of this little i5 was 1659. We're a bit ahead of that i7-6700HQ, but we're still below that i7-7700K. But either way you look at it, for a handheld unit, this thing is definitely trucking along. I also wanted to throw in a GPU benchmark, so we have 3 Mark Firestrike. At the very top, we have the WinMax. Total score, 2557. Graphics score, 2717. In the middle is a laptop that I've been using for the last month. It's a Lenovo with a Ryzen 4500U. Total score on that, 2625. Graphic score, 2852. It's definitely not that far off, but the 4500U is coming out on top, and that has the built-in Radeon RX Vega 5 graphics. And finally, at the very bottom, we have the Ryzen 3400G. Total score, 3490. Graphic score, 3859. So these Ryzen APUs are definitely beating out this Intel Iris Pro, but with that 4500U, it's really not that far off. And I was kind of surprised about this. I thought the 4500U would come way out on top. Now it's time to move over to some real-world PC game testing. Here we have Overwatch, medium settings, 1280 by 800, running great here. We're over 70 FPS, and on average, we were at 73. Fully playable on here, and it looks great on this little screen. And as you can see, I am using the built-in controller here, and they've done a great job integrating this in. It feels nice, everything works great, and it's working in X-Input mode. So as long as the game or app supports X-Input, the controller will work. And I'm going to try my hardest to leave the resolutions at either 1280x800, because that's the built-in screen resolution, or 720p. Next up, we have Rocket League, 1280x800, mix, low-medium settings, the first couple times I started this up, I was getting a really bad frame rate, and I've run into this with Rocket League before, so it's kind of hit or miss. But overall, with settings like this, or you could drop them all the way down the low, you will get over 60 with it. Here we have Minecraft Dungeons, 1280x800, low settings, running great here, over 60, and I did set the internal FPS to 144. It'll never make it there, but if you lock this at 60, it'll run it all day. Fall Guys, 720p, low settings, I did lock the V-Sync on, we're getting a constant 60 here, and it's fully playable on the GPD Win Max. As for GTA 5, I was actually expecting a little better performance than we're seeing here. I'm at normal settings, I've tried tweaking everything, I've restarted it a few times just to make sure there wasn't anything wrong with the drivers going on. DirectX 11, I'm getting an average of 32 FPS. And normal settings for GTA 5 is like low for other games, but overall, I mean, playing this on a handheld at 30 FPS, the full GTA 5 game, is pretty impressive. I had to throw some Skyrim in here. This is the special edition 720p, low settings, and while it is under 60, if I didn't have this FPS counter on, I'd still have a really enjoyable experience with this one here. If you'd like to go with the original Skyrim, medium settings, all day long at 60. Be careful. CSGO, 720p, medium settings, getting an average of 72 FPS. You drop this down, you can get even higher, but it's fully playable on the Win Max. Win. 
And here's some other games that I've tested so far. 1280 by 800 low settings, or as low as we can go with each one of these, average FPS. And keep in mind, with all of the games that you've seen in this video, I haven't done any tweaks using Intel Tuning Utility, or even messed around with the BIOS. This is all straight stock, right out of the box. So overall, I am loving the GPD Win Max, and cooling on this thing is actually excellent. It's got dual fans in here, it does get a bit loud, blows a lot of air out of the back, but I haven't noticed any overheating at all, and I've run this for a very long time. Now, if you were to compare the performance with a similarly priced gaming laptop, that laptop would beat this out every single day. But we have that form factor, and that's really where this is at. For a handheld, it's definitely a very powerful handheld. So like I mentioned, I will be posting a couple more videos on the GPD Win Max. The next one is specifically going to be geared towards emulation because this thing is an absolute beast. I got the Dolphin emulator running here. I've tested a bunch of stuff. I don't want to spoil it, but this thing does a really great job. So my first thoughts on the Max, this is an awesome gaming handheld PC, but it's not a great gaming laptop. And that's where the big difference is. If you're looking to pick up a gaming laptop and you don't mind sacrificing the form factor that the GPD Win Max has, go for a bigger, more powerful laptop with a dedicated GPU. But if you're looking for something that you can carry around in a handheld form factor, this is really hard to beat. So that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because in the next couple days I'll have some more videos on the GPD Win Max. And one that I'm super excited about is adding an eGPU. But if there's anything else you'd like to see running on the Macs, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.